Hey guys, welcome to Path to Nowhere. We're going to be discussing the build for Hecate. First and foremost, I'll get this out of the way. She's one of your best value rank A, if you don't know that yet. So I'm not sure why you don't know that. But again, she's the best value A, uh, rank A that I've been using. You guys know, know about her. We'll start off with her skill priority. Not all of her skills should be, you know, should be uh, leveled up um, at the same time. So first priority would go to her ultimate. Ultimate is her meat, the meat of what she does. Magic damage, core damage, two core damages to all enemies in a target grid. So if they're all in one target grid, then she's going to deal two core damages to each of them um, again a very good core breaker um, you'll never find one with good value aside from her probably she's one of the top good value core breakers at rank a next would be of course um, her attacks you should level up her attacks because her kit is built basically on dealing damage breaking cores so the rest would have to follow so first is limit lightless mirror next is delusion at two and third priority would be this passive into the night when a cat in nightmare deals damage to an enemy the enemy falls into a dream each stack of dream increases the damage caused by kate and nightmare with 1.2 dream can stack up to 10 times that is why it's it's three because this uh, passive has to stack and the last one is uh, when the battle starts allies gain a 10% magic penetration bonus this is very helpful if you're if you built a all magic you know penetrate uh, or a, a magic damage team but at this point I don't see you using that whole you know that that build so this one this passive ghastly shadow is going to be last okay so that is it for her skill priority lightless mirror delusion delusion into the night and ghastly shadow for that order of priority next we have is her crime brand so out of the easiest ones that we can we can get i would be suggesting glory one syndicate because of the magic damage plus 15 and and damage received plus 25 percent i know there's a magic damage to 25 um magic damage receive a uh, damage received 25 but it really is not that big as long as your team is well built and hikati is concealed very much that she doesn't need to take that additional 25 percent damage if Again, she's not in the front. Obviously, she's, she's going to be at the back. But again, this is a worthwhile investment for your crime brand. So equip her with this. Um, previously, I also equipped this with Kelvin to add additional attacks. So, And this one is specifically for magic attacks. So additional attack attribute, HP, and magic damage increase of plus 4.2%. Okay, guys, so as far as deployment is concerned, usually Hikate is, the, is at the back of somebody she's supporting in the front. So probably somebody who has lesser attack. It really depends on what you have. And um, take note that core breaking for Hikate can be used anywhere. So it's not a problem where you place her. Uh, but he, she doesn't really have that area effect that she needs to be bothered with in terms of placement. So anywhere in the field, you can really place her. You can place her at the back, in the middle probably. So again, she's not, she's not, she doesn't pose a problem in terms of placement at the start. And again, as I've said, core damage can be dealt anywhere in the field. So again, feel free to place her where you can. Um, she does not really need to be placed in, in the front. So again, feel free to place her on which of the front lines she will be supporting. For Hikate's shackle level, I already have her at five. Um, the only thing that I think 
you should uh, go after is number four. Number four is ultimate energy consumption is reduced by three. So this actually hastens her ultimate and also hastens her core breaking. Number four is very important. Number five is just extra attack. But if you could, you know, have four, that is probably the time that I think that you already have her where she needs to be. Five would just be the icing on the cake. The others is um, damage taken is reduced by 15% at three. Another plus an attack at uh, five percent at two and one is every time the ultimate is released the next damage from lightless mirror increase up to 10 increases to 10 up to 30 percent so again four is a must to reach um this makes her very very efficient in core breaking that is why i'm telling you to reach up to four at least so she's rank a She's kind of in the middle of the pack in terms of gaining copies, but again, you'll get there anyway. Okay, so we're talking about her phase three. So open up, opening up phase three will open up her exclusive crime brand. So new exclusive ultimate forbidden nature. When Hikari deploys N Nightmare to a grid, it can block two enemies and has... 120% of Ikadi's HP, 60 over attack, and 160 over defense, and magic resistant. It stays for the entire battle. Forbidden Nightmare can only be used once per battle. Take note of this. Only once. But again, this is a very, very good crime brand to have. You have an extra, extra figure. So not figure. Extra unit on the battlefield, which can block two. So take note of that this you know this makes her you know increases her value further up because of the additional um additional summon that she has which can block too and again i think she is a much she is a must at phase three she's very worth it guys i don't think you'll you know you'll you'll say that she isn't worth it with this additional crime brand and also, guys, um, right now, she is well worth your investment for anything. Um, I'm sure that you guys are going all in on investing on her. So make sure that you invest well on her, especially on skill, also on shackle, and also on crime brand. So thank you very much, guys. See you in the next one.